In this video we're going to learn how to find the area of a rectangle, a triangle, a parallelogram and a trapezium. Before we do this though, it's important to understand what we mean by the word area. If we take a ruler and draw a line that's one centimetre long, and then on the end of this a line that's one centimetre tall, and then continue to draw these one centimetre lines until we have a square that looks like this. This square will be one centimetre tall and one centimetre wide, so we call it a square centimetre, and its area is one centimetre squared. This is the unit we use for measuring area. If we take this rectangle, which has a base of four centimetres and a height of three centimetres, to work out its area, what we're really doing is asking how many of these one centimetre squares we would need to cover up the shape. So let's start covering up the shape with these one centimetre squares and see how many we need. In this case, if you count up all of those, you'll find there are 12 squares. So the area of this rectangle is 12 centimetres squared. This is not surprising since we can see there are four squares across the top since the width of the shape is four centimetres. There are three squares going up the side here because the height of the shape is three centimetres. So we could have arrived at this area very quickly by simply multiplying the four and the three. Four times three gives you 12, 12 centimetres squared. So to find the area of a rectangle, you just multiply the base, which in this case was four, by the height, which in this case was three. Let's try this with another rectangle. So for this rectangle here, we have a base of six meters and a height of three meters. So to find the area, all we need to do is multiply six and three, which gives you 18. This time the lengths are in meters, which means the area will be in meters squared. Here are two more rectangles that you might want to try and find the area for. Feel free to pause the video and give it a try first. For the first rectangle on the left hand side, we would do 10 times four, which is 40, and the units would be centimeters squared. For the one on the right we have a square, we would do 5 times 5, which is 25, and this time the units would be meters squared. Now let's take a look at how we find the area of a triangle. Let's start with this triangle here, which has a base of 10 and a height of 4. If we take a second copy of this triangle, and join it up like this, you'll see we form a rectangle. We already know how to find the area of the rectangle, we just multiply the base by the height. So the area of the rectangle would be 10 multiplied by 4, which is 40 centimetres squared. Now because we use two identical copies of this triangle, the area of the triangle must be half of the area of the rectangle. So we can take this 40 centimetres squared and divide it by two, which will give us 20 centimetres squared. This means the area of each of these triangles must be 20 centimetres squared. So the area of the triangle was 20 centimetres squared. So to find the area of a triangle, you can multiply the base by the height, and then divide this by two. Another way to write this formula is to write the dividing by two first. So we sometimes write it as one half, multiplied by the base, multiplied by the height. Let's have a look at how we can use this to find the area of some other triangles. So if we take this triangle here, we need to identify the base and the height. Here the base is four and the height is seven. So using the formula, we do one half, multiplied by the base, which is four, multiplied by the height, which is seven. Now to do this calculation we have some options. We could start by doing half of four, which is two. And then we multiply this by seven, which is 14 centimeters squared. Or alternatively, we could multiply the four and the seven first, which is 28, and then we do half of this, and half of 28 is still 14. Let's have a look at another example. So in this one here, the base is clearly 10, but the height is not so obvious. We have two numbers here, a 13 and a 12. So which one would we choose? Now if you were asked to measure the height of a person, you'd probably start right down at their feet and then measure straight up vertically to the top of their head. It would be unusual if you measured the height of a person by starting very far away from them and drawing a diagonal line to the top of their head. What's key here is that this height which goes vertically forms a right angle with the ground. When two lines form a right angle, we say they're perpendicular. So we call this one the perpendicular height. This height over here is still considered a height, but it's not useful for the area of a triangle. We call this the slant height, but we won't need it in this formula. So we need to actually update the formula. It should be one half multiplied by the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. Now let's use this formula to find the area of this triangle. So we'll do one half multiplied by the base, which we knew was 10, and then multiplied by the perpendicular height. So this time we can see that 12 is the perpendicular height because it makes a right angle with the base. So we'll use the 12 and not the 13. 
So it's multiplied by 12. Again, we have a choice of how to work this out. We could do half of 10 first, which is 5, and then multiply this by 12, which will give you 60. Or we could do 10 multiplied by 12, which is 120, and then do half of this, which will give you 60 again. Sometimes people find it difficult to identify which is the base and height of a triangle, especially because the base doesn't necessarily have to be at the bottom. If we take this triangle where we know the base is 10 and the perpendicular height is 12, and turn it around like this, the base is still 10 here and the perpendicular height is still 12. We could even turn it upside down like this, and the same thing applies, or at an interesting angle like this. What's important is that you find two lengths that have a right angle in between them. It would be a very common mistake in this one, for example, for people to try and use the 13, thinking it's the base. But really, 10 is the base, we've just turned the triangle round. If this is printed on an exam question, feel free to turn the page around so you can try and find the correct base and height. Here are two examples of triangles that you might want to try and find the area of. Feel free to pause the video and give this a try yourself. For the first triangle, the base is 8 and the height is 5. So we do 1 half multiplied by 8 multiplied by 5. And if you do this, you'll get 20 centimeters squared. For the second triangle, the base is the 12 here, and the perpendicular height is the 8. So we don't need the 10 in this question. So we would do 1 half multiplied by the base, which was 12, multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is 8. And if you work this out, you'll get 48 centimeters squared. Now let's have a look at how to find the area of this shape, which is called a parallelogram. This shape is a parallelogram because it has two pairs of parallel sides. Parallel sides are sides that will never meet. So if we extended these sides like this, you'll see they're always the same distance away from each other. They're never going to cross. And the same applies to these sides here. So we call this shape a parallelogram. But how do we find its area? Well, to do that, we're going to draw on this line here. We'll then imagine we cut along this line, say with some mathematical scissors. We'll take this triangle, bring it over this side, and join it back up to the shape again, perhaps with some mathematical glue. You can now see that this shape forms a rectangle, but we haven't altered the shape. It should still have the same area. Nothing's been removed or taken away, it's just been moved around a bit. So the area of this rectangle will be the same as the area of the parallelogram. If we compare this rectangle to the original parallelogram, you can see they both have the same base, and they both have the same perpendicular height. So to find the area of a parallelogram, we simply multiply the base by the perpendicular height, just like we do for a rectangle. You need to be aware that parallelograms can also have a slant height. That will be this length here. We don't need that to find the area, but it may be given in the question. Let's have a look at an example. So in this one, we just need to multiply the base, which is 11, by the perpendicular height, which is 5. Notice how we didn't need the 6 centimeters, the slant height, at all. And 11 times 5 is 55. So the answer is 55 centimeters squared. Here are two more parallelograms for you to try. And so for the answers, we would multiply the base here 8 by the perpendicular height 3. So 8 multiplied by 3 is 24 centimeters squared. In the second question, the parallelogram has been turned on its side. So here the base is 2 and the perpendicular height is the 2.5. So we do 2 multiplied by 2.5, which is 5. And the units this time are meters squared because the lengths were in meters. Now let's move on to the final shape. You need to know how to find the area of this shape, which is a trapezium. A trapezium is a shape that has one pair of parallel sides. You can see the top and bottom side here are parallel. However, the sides at the side are not parallel because they would cross up here. We usually use arrows to indicate which sides are parallel. To find the area of a trapezium, we need to use this formula here. There are some letters in this formula where A and B represent the parallel sides and H is the perpendicular height of the trapezium. Let's have a look at how we can use this in an example. The first thing to do is work out the values of A, B, and H. So A and B are the parallel sides, so we could say that 5 was A, and the 9 on the bottom was B. It doesn't actually matter which way round you put these, you could have labelled the 9 as A and the 5 as B. And then the height, which is H, would be 3. We then just copy out this formula and replace those letters A, B, and H with the numbers in the question. So we have one half, then a bracket, then inside this bracket we're going to add a and b together, so we need to add 5 and 9 together. And then we multiply this by h, which is the height, which for our trapezium was 3. Then we just work this out. To work it out I would do one half, then I would work out what's in the bracket here, so 5 plus 9 which is 14, and then I need to multiply this by 3. Next I would do half of 14, which is 7, and then multiply this by 3, 
and 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. So the area of this trapezium is 21 centimeters squared. Here are two more trapeziums for you to try. Let's start by labeling A, B, and H. A and B are the parallel sides, so that will be the 7 and the 5, and H is the height, which is also 5. Then we use the formula 1 half, then a bracket. Inside the bracket, we add A and B, so we add 7 and 5, and then we multiply by the height, which is 5. To do this, we do 1 half, we add 7 and 5, which is 12, and then multiply by 5. 1 half of 12 is 6, so 6 multiplied by 5, which is 30. So the answer is 30 centimeters squared. This next trapezium has been turned on its side. The parallel lines are actually on the left and the right of the shape. So we could say that A is 3 and B is the 9. And this would also mean the height is the 8 at the bottom. Now we use the formula 1 half and then a bracket. Inside the bracket we add A and B, so 3 and 9, and then multiply the height, which is 8. Notice we didn't need the 10 centimeters in this question at all. To work this out, we do 1 half, we add the 3 and the 9, which is 12, and then multiply by 8. Half of 12 is 6, and 6 multiplied by 8 is 48 centimeters squared. Now that we've learned how to find the area of these shapes, let's have a look at how they're sometimes assessed in exam questions. Sometimes you'll be given a grid like this, which is referred to as a centimeter grid. This is because each of the squares in the grid has an area of 1 cm squared. So you may be given a shape that looks like this without any measurements on it, and asked to find its area. One way to do this is simply count up all of the squares, and there would be 30 for this shape, so its area must be 30 cm squared. Alternatively, you could work out the width of the shape, which is 6 cm, and its height, which is 5 cm, and then multiply 6 and 5 to get 30 cm squared. It doesn't matter whether you do the calculation approach or counting the squares. However, in this shape here, counting the squares is very difficult, because you can see whilst we have some whole squares, we have lots of part squares as well, and we can't tell exactly how big each of those is. So for this one, we would want to work out the base, which should be 7 centimeters, and the height, which is 6 centimeters. We then use the formula, 1 half multiplied by the base, multiplied by the perpendicular height. And if you work this out, you'll get 21 centimeters squared. Here are two more shapes for you to try and work out the area of on a grid. For the triangle, the base is 3 centimeters, and the perpendicular height is quite tricky to spot, but it's 4 centimeters. Remember, it has to make a right angle with the base. So we would do 1 half multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4, which will give you 6 centimeters squared. The next shape is a trapezium. We can see the parallel sides are the top here, which is 2 cm, and the base here, which is 6 cm. The perpendicular height would then be here, which is 5 cm. So we use the formula 1 half. Inside a bracket, we add a and b, which is 2 and 6, and then multiplied by the height, which is 5. If you work this one out, you should get 20 cm squared. Sometimes we get exam questions where you're told the area of a shape, and you're asked to find out one of its lengths. For example, this one here has a height of 3 cm, and we're told its area is 24 centimeters squared, and then we're asked to work out its width. So if we were to work out the area of a rectangle, we would normally multiply the 3 and the w together, but we've been told the answer to that must be 24. So we end up with this equation here. 3 multiplied by w is just written as 3w. So we need to solve 3w equals 24. We can do this by dividing both sides by 3. If you divide the left side by 3, you'll get 1w, and 24 by 3 on the right side is 8, so w must have been 8. Let's try another example with this rectangle. This time we're told the width, it's 10 cm, the area is 65 cm squared, and they would ask us to work out the height, which is h. So to work out the area, we'd normally multiply the 10 and the h together, and this needs to give us 65 cm squared. 10 times h is just 10h, so we have this equation to solve. We can divide both sides by 10 this time. 10h divided by 10 is just 1h, and 65 divided by 10 is 6.5. Now you might be thinking, couldn't you simply do 24 divided by 3 for the first one, and 65 divided by 10 for the second one? And you would be right. However, people that use this approach tend to really struggle when we look at a triangle like this one here. So if we take this triangle and I tell you the base is 6, I don't tell you the height, but I tell you the area is 30 centimeters squared. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can work out what h must be. Some people would simply divide 30 by 6, which will give you 5, and assume the height is 5. 
But this is incorrect, because when we do the area of a triangle, we must multiply the base and the height, but also half it. So let's have a look at how we can do this properly. We take the area of a triangle, which is one half, multiplied by the base, which we know is six, and then we multiply this by the height, which we don't know, but it is called h. We know the area is 30, so this must equal 30 centimeters squared. We now have this equation to solve. If you do half of six, you get three, and then three multiplied by h is three h. So you end up with three h equals 30. If we solve this equation by dividing by three on both sides, we find that h is equal to 10. So h wasn't five because we have that halving factor. h is actually 10. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not go and try the exam questions in this video's description.